Hey everybody, uh, so this video is going to be a quick, hopefully, uh, quick video over correlation, all right? Um, some of it will hope, well, I'm hoping a lot of it will be review, but some of it uh, hopefully will uh, make a few points a little bit more clearer, making the assignment a little bit easier. All right, so let's get to it. First, what is correlation? Well, a correlation is a standardized uh, statistical estimate of the extent to which two variables co-vary. All right, well, what does that mean? Well, uh, let's talk about a variable that most people are at least somewhat familiar with, depression. Depression can vary in a number of ways. It's not this monolo monolithic concept. It's not just you are depressed or you're not, all right? Um, you can vary in depression in a number of ways. You can vary in severity. Uh, you can vary in the amount and the number of symptoms you have. Uh, so depression can vary in a number of ways. Well, this circle represents the entirety of the variation in depression. All right, now if we wanted to numerically represent that variation, we'd use a one. If we wanted to uh, uh, refer to 80% of the variation in depression, we'd use 0 0.8. If we wanted to talk about half of it, we'd use 0 0.5. But one represents, numer numerically represents all of the variation in depression. All right, all the possible ways that depression can vary. Social support is a variable that often is related or co-varies with depression. And just like depression, social support is not this monolithic variable. You don't have or don't have social support. Social support varies in a number of ways, all the way from having a single acquaintance to having a large, highly supportive family and a highly supportive culture. So social support and depression both vary in a number of ways. Just like we represent the entirety of the variance in depression with one, we represent the entirety of variance in social support with a one. Now, to what extent do they overlap? Well, correlation gives you the extent to which the variation in one co-occurs or co-varies. It occurs in the same, uh, following the same pattern as another. So to what extent does the variance in depression follow or co-occur with the variance in social support. Correlation gives you a standardized measure of that extent. All right, and so usually they're negatively correlated, that's why I made the correlation negative there. I don't know what the specific correlation is off the top of my head, so I just threw a point four in there. Now, before we move on to breaking that correlation coefficient down, I wanted to highlight the fact that correlation and a covariation, which are two statistic, uh, statistic, statistical elements that you've, estimates that you've heard of, they are conceptually highly similar. The only real difference between the two is that correlation is standardized, covariation is not. The benefit of that is that because correlation is standardized, we can interpret the number in a, more easily. Because covariation is not standardized, usually it's calculated using the variable's original metrics. Now, correlation can be at the beginning too, depending on which equation you use, but in the end, the number that you get from correlation is standardized. The number that you get from covariation is not. So it's difficult to interpret what a covariation is. It's difficult to interpret the extent to which the two variables co-vary from a covariation estimate. Correlation, because it's standardized, allows us to, inf to, to glean at least two pieces of information about the extent to which two, extent to which two variables co-vary. So here is that correlation coefficient that we had there, negative 0.4. And the two pieces of information are highlighted there. So first, we get the strength of the, vari of the uh, relationship, 0.4. All right, now there are norms that we use. Your, uh, so for example, uh, if that 0.4 had been a one, not a 0.1, that's a very different thing. If it had been a 1.0, then it'd be a perfect relationship. Meaning as social support uh, increases, so does the other. Or if it were a negative one, 
then as one increases, the other decreases. All right. Um, if they were perfectly positively correlated, they they may very well be the same thing. They may not actually be different concepts. All right. Now, the other piece of information we get is the direction. Now here, the direction is negative, meaning as one increases, the other decreases. But that sign can also be positive, meaning as one increases, the other increases. So those are the two pieces of information we get. Here are the guidelines for assessing the strength. So the sign gives you the direction, the number gives you the strength. And these are the guidelines for the strengths. Now the bars that you see on each side, that means absolute value. So that one could be negative. That 0.7 could be negative. So it could be negative 0.7. So the strength of the relationship is indicated by the extent to which it deviates from zero. All right. One and negative one are equally strong, but in opposite directions. 0.7 and negative 0.7 are equally strong, but in opposite direction. 0.3 and negative 0.3 are equally strong but in opposite directions. So <clears throat> I know that it, I've, I've been repetitive there, but I really wanted to emphasize that because it's very common for people to think, oh, that's a weak relationship, so that's, that's a very weak relationship. There's no relationship there. That must be a negative one. No, 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 all right? If there's no relationship, then the correlation is zero, all right? And I just wanted to emphasize that because that's a common mistake. All right. Really quickly, really briefly, I wanted to mention that although we're going to be talking about the Pearson's R product moment correlation coefficient, which is the one that is most commonly used um, because it looks at the covariation between two continuous variables and most variables, many variables, well, I don't know if it's fair to say most, but many variables are continuous, meaning they have a wide range of response options, all right? Height has a wide range of response options. You could be four foot tall, you could be eight feet tall. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty wide range. Um, you could be two years old, you could be 82 years old. That's a wide range. So there's a wide range of response options. Now, when you're looking at the covariation or the correlation between two continuous variables, you're going to use Pearson's R product moment correlation coefficient. But if one of your variables isn't, um, if uh, continuous, let's say one of them is dichotomous, meaning it only has two response options, so yes, no, uh, male, female, um, night, day, you know, if, if it only has two response options, then that variable is dichotomous. You can still look at a correlation between one continuous variable and a dichotomous variable, but you're going to have to use the point by serial correlation. If both of the variables you want to see, the, uh, see how they correlate, you need to use the fee coefficient. If, on the other hand, both of your variables are ordinal, meaning they're rank, they're rank but the, the differences between the ranks aren't consistent, you can still look at the correlation between those, but you're gonna to have to use a Pearson rank correlation. So you have different types of correlation coefficients that you can calculate to look at the covariance between different kinds of variables. But the one that is typically most commonly used, and the one that we're gonna talk about principally today, is the Pearson's R product moment correlation coefficient, all right? So let's start out with talking about the strength of those relationships. Remember that I said that if you had a correlation of one, then that's a perfect relationship. So you can see here is a scatter plot and then a line drawn through the, the dot. So a person who scored a one on variable A and a one on variable two, there's their dot person who scored a two on variable one and a two on variable B, a, a two on variable A and a two on variable B, there's their dot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When we draw a line through them, it's a straight line going from the bottom leftmost point of the graph to the top rightmost point of the graph. That is a perfect correlation, okay? But rarely are two variables correlated that perfectly. In fact, I think I may have seen it once ever, okay? Usually you get something with a, a, a scatter plot more akin to this, in which case a correlation coefficient looks at that relationship and tries to look at the extent to which those two variables are linear, linearly, linearly, linearly related. All right, well, you can see that they're not perfectly linearly related. So 
not all, in fact, in this example, none of the points fall on that straight line. And this is the best possible straight line to be drawn between them, okay? So because none of the points are falling on that line, but this is the general pattern, and you can see that the line doesn't start here and doesn't end here, yeah, this is positive because it's going, as one's going up, so is the other, but it's not perfect. So it's going to be greater than zero, but it's not going to be one, okay? So it's going to be somewhere between zero and positive one. Well, you can have a ne perfect negative relationship, again, so it's the exact opposite of the perfect positive. So as one uh, increases, the other decreases. So person one scored a one on variable A and a seven on variable B. Person two scored a two on variable A and a six on variable B. And if you draw a line through it, you see it's this perfect straight line from the left uppermost point to the bottom rightmost point. Well, again, just like we don't often get a perfect positive relationship, we often don't get a perfect negative relationship. It's usually something more akin to this. Again, so you see the line, this one's close to it, to touching it, but for the most part, none of the points actually fall on that line. But this line describes the general trend. So they are negatively correlated, all right, but they're not perfectly negatively correlated. So the number will be somewhere between zero and negative one. Now, the other option is there is no correlation, all right? And many things can give us no correlation because, let me review, all right? So correlation looks at the extent to which two variables co-vary, but it, but it only assesses the extent to which they co-vary in a linear fashion, all right? If they deviate too far, even if they do co-vary in a coherent way, if, they, if the relationship deviates too far from a straight line, then that correlation is going to be close to zero. So a zero correlation, a correlation of R equals zero, can be caused not just by there being no relationship. It can also be caused by there being a relationship that's not linear, all right? So for example, quadratic relationships or a curved linear relationship. So here's an example of no relationship, you know, as, so you see here, as one increases, the other does nothing, all right? Flat line, okay? The best line to draw through them, flat line, okay? So we have no relationship here. We have no correlation. But what I'm about to show you, the fact that a quadratic relationship also gives you an R of zero highlights the fact that, a, that the word relationship is not always synonymous with the word correlation, all right? Correlation only refers to the extent to which two variables co-vary in a linear fashion. Two variables can co-vary in a number of different ways. They can co-vary in a curved linear fashion, like we see here, all right, and I'll come back to this in a second. They can co-vary in a cubic fashion, um, in a quartic fashion, they can co-vary in a number of different ways. But correlation coefficients only uh, indicate the extent to which two variables co-vary in a linear fashion. All right, so let's talk about a curved linear. So here you see, as one variable goes up, the other starts to go up and then become, starts coming back down, okay? So, this is a curve linear relationship. If we try to draw a line, you see here's the line. If we try to draw a line that is the best linear trend of all the scatter, dot, scatter uh, of all the dots, it's flat. So the R, the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient would be zero. There is very obviously a relationship here, but there's no correlation. So we have a relationship, but no correlation. Because again, correlation only refers to the extent. It only gives us some indication of the extent to which two variables co-vary in a linear fashion. Okay? Just because correlation equals zero doesn't mean that the two variables are not related. They very well may be, which emphasizes the point of always looking at scatter plots. But um, it does indicate whether or not they are linearly, linearly, apparently I have a lot of trouble with that word, linearly related, okay? 
those are the points that I wanted to highlight uh, in this video. Uh, I, I don't I don't see a clock, so I don't know how long this is taking, and I apologize if it's been terribly long, but hopefully this will clear up some points of ambiguity and help everyone be better um, when asked about correlation. All right, guys, if you have any questions, be sure to send them my way. Take it easy.